Uh, the eruption in the Lower East Rift Zone continues at about the same uh, strength or vigor as we have observed in the past um, one to two weeks. Lava is upwelling uh, from Fisher 8, forming a lava fountain and flowing through a channel all the way to the ocean. At the ocean, the uh, flow front uh, is uh, quite wide approaching a mile wide and lava is entering the ocean at multiple spots along that flow front. So we've not seen any uh, detected uh, change in the vigor of the eruption uh, at this point. Up at the summit there was a, another uh, seismic event, uh, an explosive event that occurred early this morning at about 2.44 a.m. Hawaii time. Uh, this event followed uh, 12 to 24 hours of increased uh, seismic activity, uh, very similar to the pattern of uh, the explosive seismic events of the past uh, one to two weeks. Uh, this particular event uh, was accompanied by additional subsidence of the uh, crater floor uh, right next to the Mau Mau crater rim. One of our stations showed a uh, lowering of about 10 feet as a result of last night's uh, explosive event. This is uh, pretty common, very characteristic of these events, and uh, probably represents uh, down dropping of that station as well as slumping uh, toward the uh, Holly Mountain Mile Crater. Hi, um, any updates in terms of the amount of new land created? Any more um, updated figures? Uh, good morning. Hi, this is Steve. Uh, no, I don't have any uh, new information yet. Uh, we did. Uh, we will be putting out a new map a little bit later uh, in the day, and so that might provide a little bit of a little bit more information. But I don't have those that number right at my fingertips right now. Thanks. Hi. I, I, I had another question. So uh, when they uh, when it was announced yesterday that there were some 600 homes uh, estimated to have been lost uh, in this uh, latest uh, volcanic uh, the eruption event since May 3rd, uh, all told. Um, I, I just wanted to know, I, I know you guys don't track homes, but, but I think you know something about the history of, of other uh, this, this destructive earthquakes. And I, from what I can tell, this was, I talked, I talked to somebody, I got a hold of a scientist, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Dr. Snellen on, uh, from University of uh, Dr. Roland from University of uh, Hawaii in Mono, and he he said he he was, he was sure this was certainly the the most in terms of property damage or property losses that this would have been the most destructive earthquake in the United States since the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. And um, I don't know if there's is, is there anything going back, but I know the the la I, uh, uh, there was the Katmai earthquake in Alaska, but that didn't really, this was out in the middle of nowhere. I think there was a, there was the last in peak. Quake in 1915. Again, that was pretty. I doubt there was a whole lot in terms of property losses out there. Or uh, is there anything else, either in, on Hawaii or Alaska or anywhere else, anybody knows about, or, or the Cascades that that has you know since going back further than Mount St. Helens that destroyed you know this many uh, properties in one one go. Uh, hi, this is uh, Steve. Um, just to clarify, uh, the different. Um, Events that you're describing were uh, volcanic eruptions, uh, not earthquakes. And the I think Scott, uh, Dr. Rowland's uh, estimation is is uh, accurate that this eruption has covered more homes uh, and property uh, than the eruptions um, at Kilauea, uh, say during 19. Uh, 90 and 91 when Kalapana was was covered with lava and also uh, more homes and property loss uh, this time around compared to 1955 and 1960 at Kilauea. Okay, thank you. I, 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 I misspoke. I, of course, I meant volcanoes, not earthquakes. Uh, sorry about that. And, and uh, uh, the uh, and there's I don't know if there'd been anything at Mauna Loa. Uh, I, I think there was a big Mauna Loa eruption in 1984 or something. I think, but I, again, I don't think that was it lasted about three weeks. And 
I don't, I don't uh, gather, I don't reckon there was a lot of property losses from that either. Is that right? The uh, 1984 eruption of Mauna Loa um, did not generate uh, lava flow that that moved into a subdivision uh, like the lava flows of the past three weeks, four weeks. So uh, during that er eruption, there were no homes lost. Uh, before that time, uh, Mauna Loa erupted in 1950 uh, and did generate lava flows that went to the uh, west coast of the island and uh, did bury uh, some homes and, and communities uh, on that side of the island. So you don't know whether what the extent of that was, like in terms of losses of homes or communities? And, was it, was it uh, not like off that? the top of my head. Um, if you uh, take a look at the HVO website, go to the Mauna Loa section and look in the geologic history part, uh, there's a little summary about uh, the 1950 eruption. There may be uh, some numbers like that that you can pull from. Hi, thanks. Is it possible for new fissures to open at this point? Uh, this is Steve Brantley. Um, yes. The uh, eruption is still going quite strong. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, it's, uh, the activity has been focused at fissure 8. It certainly is possible for some of the other fissures to uh, become active or perhaps for even uh, a new segment or a new, new fissure segment to uh, become the eruption site. Uh, in, in the near future. But I just want to make it clear, this is not something that we're predicting. We can't really predict that. Uh, what we try to do is to um, measure the, uh, keep track of the overall risk zone and where it's becoming uh, pressurized uh, as perhaps an indication to say where an additional uh, extrusion or a, a new fissure might form. But for the past few weeks, uh, the overall rift zone has been relatively stable. It has not been widening. It's not been pressurizing anywhere. So it appears that right now there's just a nice steady stream of uh, magma moving through the rift zone and erupting at fissure 8. And sorry, remind us, uh, remind me when the last time, which, what date was the newest fissure? Uh, I don't have that information right at the top of my head. So I think the newest fissure was number 24, and uh, we'd have to go back through some of our regular updates to see uh, when that particular fissure, what date it formed. I don't have that at the top of my head. It's okay. Thanks. So as a follow-up to uh, that question about whether new fissures are possible, um, one of the things that we try to focus uh, our field efforts on uh, both during our overflights, uh, which we do three times a day now, and also during our field work in the area, is to try to track uh, formation of the existing or the development of the existing ground cracks, whether they're widening or uh, extending a uh, longer distance, uh, how much steam may be coming out of those ground cracks, and even the temperature as a way to try to anticipate uh, perhaps those cracks becoming a new fissure, uh, active fissure. And uh, so far, we've not seen uh, very much change uh, in those ground cracks, just uprift of where the uh, fissure complex uh, is located right now. 